back when the military commander's idea of soldiers was essentially as the pieces in a risk game. But I digress. That was one of the things. The Viet Cong used guerrilla combat. They knew the areas. They hid, sometimes among civilians, leading to countless atrocities by the U.S. soldiers. Again, this is the war this movie is trying to glamorize. It's trying to say, we were right, they were wrong, and we should have just sent in some men who could kill them all and rescue prisoners, and then come back and destroy, you know, I don't know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Why did they put Charles Napier in that role? He was badass in Blues Brothers. Under no circumstances are you to engage the enemy. But if you choose to bring a massive knife, a compound bow, explosive shells for the arrowheads, that's okay. Anybody else notice that he never does take any pictures? And the first time he comes upon what he thinks is a Viet Cong, he tries to kill her, or at least neutralize her anyway. Not high, just goes straight. No, he won't crack. I mean, yes, the entire first movie was dedicated to showing him crack, but this time he has people to kill. Okay, let's see. The movie's kind of slow here. Can we add some useless tension about Rambo possibly being killed before he even exits the helicopter? I mean, people will surely believe that he might die already, even though the movie's, you know, half an hour into its 90-minute running time. A mid-1980s action flick, written by the guy who, responsible for two of the very best of such. And yet it sucks. Maybe it's because of George P. Comatose. Okay, I hear that Tombstone is supposedly good, but there's this movie, The Cassandra Crossing, and I hear that Cobra is also really bad. With that said, rest in peace, dude. For all I know, you were a great guy. For those who believe in heaven, I do hope that you're not directing any in-flight movies for that ascension. What, you don't think there'll be in-flight movies for that long trip to the pearly gates? Every good airline has them, and it's gotta be a really long trip since we've gone past our own atmosphere several times and have yet to stumble upon it. Oh, uh, I, I shouldn't shout and alert the camp, should I? Nah, that would be dumb, I'm just gonna die. When hit in the forehead with an arrow fired by a compound bow, no less, you will slowly move into the near- The laws of physics are overrated. Okay, not to be an ass to Sly, but when he repeats Trotman saying, Mission, he has that duh, expression on his face that you almost expect Troutman to respond by explaining what the word mission means. It's a good thing you came when you did. They were about to serve lunch. Have you tried rice soup? It is disgusting. How dare you be patriotic, Troutman? Anyone else amused by that Russian interrogator clearly speaking with a poor German accent? So after Rambo gets tortured so much that he becomes a ventriloquist, seriously, not a single one of those yells actually fit his mouth moving. They decide that his moving his head slightly means that he's ready to radio. Most of the action in this is just clumsy and poor. How about on the boat when at least one of the guys he shoots is just standing there waiting to be shot? That guy does not seem to try to take a shot at John. Or the guy who pops up just so he can get shot or the guy who appears out of nowhere on the top of the boat. Seriously, what was he waiting for? Or the two grenades that Rambo throws, neither of which seem to do anything. You know, when he and she are escaping from the camp. Other than allow the crew to use their smoke machine. Not all of what Rambo does even qualifies as guerrilla tactics, so what's the point? With that said, there is some decent guerrilla action in this. Also, the bit with the guy who gets hit by an explosive arrowhead is friggin' awesome. And for there being very little suspense in this film, I will say that bit where they're walking through the cornfield is quite suspenseful. The soldiers never seem to be able to hit him, and if they can, they don't shoot. So this is where he starts running Rambo, just gunning people down with the M60, and this promotes the idea that if you just respond with violence, kill the bad guys, save the good guys, then everything will work out. How uncomplicated. And the reason the Vietnam War was lost was because of the pansy bureaucrats who prevented the real men from winning it. As far as I understand, that was Stallone's idea, not James Cameron's. It tries to make the Vietnam War look heroic. And then the film ends and we get the horrible end credit song sung by his brother. Now there are two things about this that are really cool, and that's 
that this is the first time we see Rambo use the compound bow. And I'm not gonna deny that that kicks ass. It's also apparently the first movie to feature the Sig Sauer P226, which is a really cool gun. That would be it for First Blood Part 2. Moving on to... Rambo 3. I guess at this point they figured that the whole First Blood thing was getting silly. Rambo isn't brooding, he's just continually brutally fighting. You know, with the current political climate and the whole war on terror business, it's a little unfortunate that this film backs up Afghanistan. Oh no, out here he has no superiors. How anti-military? That Russian accent is so over the top. And we will. Seriously, am I playing Red Alert 2? You're underestimating your competition, you know, just like we did in Nam. To be fair, the movie does admit that itself. So, in other words, America should now be the rest of the world's big brother and say, don't hit that, I totally went there and she has crabs and shit. I will admit, as much as the movie as a whole is pretty lousy, the speech at the half hour point is pretty, and a little of the comic relief is fine. You know, the how many days walk? about two years, that exchange is genuinely fairly funny. Then again, later on, the wit between Rambo and Troutman is really stupid. The kid is a little annoying. There are hardly any women in this film, and you can really tell the testosterone is through the roof. Am I the only one who thinks that that game they play, you know, with an animal for a ball, is pretty disgusting and disrespectful? I'm sorry, but that thing is a life form. And no, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. There is a huge difference between eating an animal, as also happens in nature, and using it as a possession. And yes, I do prefer them to make a ball out of leather or whatever. You know, kill the animal, eat it, use the skin to make something out of. That's completely different from throwing it around like that. God must love crazy people, and Hollywood must love lousy sequels to great films. Oh, they get hit during playtime. How unexpected. And the dude is flying it himself? I thought he was the boss out there. I will admit, I too get a kick out of seeing Rambo behind the machine gun in this movie. Where is the honor here? Where? I know, that's one of the things that was wrong with, with Vietnam. They killed my whole family! I want to fight! Shouldn't you learn how to act first? Am I the only one who desperately wants to shout at every single enemy Rambo faces, TAKE FUCKING COVER! Now apparently this did help to get the Russians out of Afghanistan, and of course, if that is true, then that's great! I like that they keep up the continuity with him wearing the necklace from the girl in the second film, and the scars that we saw in the first two films. Apparently, originally Russell Mulcahy, who directed Resident Evil Extinction, was originally supposed to direct this, and maybe would have done a better job. Resident Evil Extinction is not a good movie, but the direction wasn't that bad. I thought he made the whole on-the-road thing work. Anyway, McDonald, who did direct it, did not do that good a job. He had been a second unit director until then, and this was his debut, and it shows. At least they do have Rambo react in pain when he singes the wound, so he doesn't come off as entirely invincible and impossible to relate to. Silly Russian. Rambo's knife is only for him to use. And then near the end, Rambo actually spets nice guys, and they make the same fucking mistakes that everybody else does in these movies. When fighting Rambo. Not taking cover, not paying close enough attention so that he can hide from them. Wouldn't Rambo have an easier time climbing that rope if he used his feet too? Dude, stop showing off. You're in a war zone. Can you fly that thing? Let's find out. Ah, sorry, I, I couldn't. Guess we're stuck here now. Why did the big Russian dude wait until after Rambo pulled the pin on the grenade to deal with him clearly still being able to move his arms? The part about them not getting hit there at the end is fucking ridiculous. Oh, it's an army of Deus Ex Machina to the rescue. Riding a horse toward your armored enemy as tanks and whatnot fire at you isn't so much defiant as just plain idiotic. I mean, there's a thin line between optimism and idiocy, and you're nowhere near that line. You're just plain retarded. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. I'm not holding my ears to keep out the sound. I'm trying to get the blood to stop shooting out of them. 